This simple and inspired VFX shot that we create is actually super easy to make and takes only a few minutes. But before we go ahead and do that, before we go ahead and make it, there are a few things that we need to have and know to get it done. The first thing we need is a tripod or something to study our camera or whatever recording device we're using on. You can use both an iPhone, GoPro, drone, camera, whatever you want as long as you follow the next few steps. The second thing you need, like I said, is obviously something to film with, whether that's an iPhone or a drone or a camera. You need something that can record footage, hopefully at 4K, and if not at 4K, at least at full HD. And the last thing you need is actually just some type of software that can edit using a tool called a mask. But okay, so now that you have these things, you're probably still like, okay, I have, I have them. How do I get what I want out of it? How do I get this effect to happen? Simple. Take your recording device and place it on a tripod. Now, hit record. Make sure that whatever's in your shot is unobstructing the frame in the foreground and that the sky and horizon line are pretty easily visible and unobstructed. You can have clouds in your shot, but you obviously want a very open, clear sky. If possible, it'll make it very easy. But if you have clouds, that's fine. Just make sure your other shot, you are doing two here, also has clouds or at least a little bit of cloud coverage to make it kind of blend better because that's what we're doing. We're blending two clips together. Now, grab your second shot, follow the exact same rules Except this shot can have something obstructing the sky a bit maybe you have a mountain or like a city skyline or something that's kind of like you know adding some variety to the sky but not taking away from the actual sky itself and now just like that you're done you filmed what you need to film but okay since we shot the footage now we need to edit it i'll be doing this in premiere pro as always let's go ahead and get into this effect so we're gonna go ahead and drag both of these clips one on top of the other so now that they're both in the timeline just drag one on top of the other like i said Zoom in, and you know, I actually want the other clip on top of this. So there we go, highlight and drag those down to V1 and V2. Now toggle on V2, just so we have a little bit of control with our arrow keys for both layers. Okay, so now that our clips are in a 1080p timeline, and we have them both selected, you can go ahead and choose that top clip. That's the one we're gonna add a thing called a layer mask to, or a mask to. Click it, now it's selected. Over here in effect controls, let's go ahead and take our rotation to 180 degrees, that'll 100% flip the uh, clip upside down, which is what we want. Now, position, let's grab our Y and drag it down. That'll bring it up. So I'd say that's probably good right about there. Now, as you can't see much of the bottom clip, but we know it's there and I know what my shot is, I'm gonna go ahead and click it and drag that Y value up to maybe about 700-ish or Eh, that should be good right about there. We're gonna adjust this in the future and we can always continue to adjust this, but for the sake of right now, that's good. So now, as we are first off upside down and second of all, repositioned on our timeline, you can go ahead, click that top clip again. Like I said, this is the one we're going to be applying the mask to. So for the mask, come down here in our effect controls panel, which yours might be up at the top, it might be somewhere else, but go to effect controls, hover over opacity, and you'll see these little symbols here, a circle, you know, a square, and a free draw bezier or the pen tool as most people will refer to it. What we wanna go ahead and do is select this tool. But before we do that, go here to fit or select zoom level. 25% is a little bit outscaled. So let's go uh, 50%. Perfect. Now we have this area around the box or around our footage that is uh, pretty much an empty gray space that we can still work within. We're gonna go back down to opacity while this is still selected. Press on the pen tool. And now you can see you can click outside of your actual program or your sequence. So click uh, roughly somewhere in the center of these two clips along your main program here. And uh, let's go click here, click there, click, click, click. And now you can have a choice to either go up or down. Let's just go out and crop out this section. So there's our mask and now we select all these as I click all I'm doing is left clicking and just selecting points and I'm going to connect this last point to our original first point we have once I do that you'll notice oh crap the entire you know what you wanted to have the mountain here it's gone where the hell did it go okay so quick and easy solution is just to come down here back in our effect controls and press invert now it'll delete what was in the section of this mask instead of what was actually masked out that's the way i prefer to do it you could of course have always just not built the mask out here and gone from this point this way but that's just my preference i don't know why that's just how i do it so that's why i'm teaching it that way if you didn't notice you could see both clips it actually looks kind of similar to what i uh, showed you in the end but there's this extremely harsh line 
that looks extremely fake, terrible, and it's just not convincing whatsoever. So we're gonna fix that by going to right here to our zoom level again, scaling it to fit so you can see what you're working with a little bit better. Going back and selecting our clip once again, back into effect controls, and go down to mask feather. Now, feathering allows it to be a little bit smoother or a bit harsher of a cut on your mask, it doesn't matter. But what we're gonna do is go ahead and take the mask feather and we're gonna bring it up quite a bit of ways up. Roughly in the 160 range is looking pretty solid, pretty smooth, and almost indiscernible with the sky. And as you can tell, and as you might be able to catch on by now, the reason I told you you need a clear blue sky or something very either cloudy on both ends or whatever is because you want the backgrounds, which is the sky in this case, to mix well so people can't see the cut and they can't see the mask. And it looks, you know, as real as this, you know, out outworldly effect can look. But now you have successfully gone ahead and made this clip look the way you wanted it to. So we're going to go ahead and drag it back to the beginning of our timeline. Press the tilde or underneath the uh, escape button to full screen it. And we're going to watch it back. Okay, cool. So we went ahead and watched it back and we noticed, okay, yeah, it looks, you know, somewhat realistic, as realistic as it could, but it's not very intriguing and it just doesn't really do the job for it. Now this can be solved in two ways. One, the first way is with Foley or sound effects, and this will obviously help sell the effect much better. We can add some wind sound, we can add some beach sounds, because obviously this clip on top was from a beach. We can add, you know, maybe a couple car sounds to add into these cars that are, might be driving by or just parked in general. We can add, you know, some highway sounds for this section. We can add a bunch of different things that will make this feel like you're actually there, like you're in between both of these clips in these worlds. Not to mention adding wind because obviously, you know, your clip is somewhere in the middle of this, meaning it's in the air. You just want to add a bunch of effects that make it sound and feel like you're really there. And we can take this a step further by actually nesting these clips and rotating the shot to make it feel kind of like an Inception inspired, you know, mind bending footage. So let's go ahead and do that really, really quickly. I'm not going to go too in depth on it, but I will touch on both a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and make a bin, label it SFX, right? Enter, and I'm going to drag in all my sound effects and then I'll piece in, you know, what I think is good and I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, so now I've gone ahead and I've dragged in some SFX and I've also dragged in two different songs that I think might work for this scenario. Let's go ahead and actually add the sound first before we do the visual spinning effect that I showed in the beginning of this video. So right here, I have a actually high wind cliff sound. We're gonna go ahead and perfect. Now let's go ahead and drag this into our footage. Obviously this wind is way longer than we need it to. So I would say, let's just cut it off, delete it. Wind is something that I don't really mess with too much in the sense of having to actually edit a lot of it. Um, because most of the time it just sounds like wind. You don't have to choose a particular part. It's just cut out, have a remote you need and uh, move on with your day. Now this is a sound of beach and waves. Great, yep, so let's go ahead and drag that in there as well. Drag that to the length of it. Let's lower that because it's a little bit intense and save, make sure you continuously save. So we're not gonna go too much into the Foley today. Of course, I could go insanely deep into sound design and I could go over the top of this, but just for the sake of the tutorial and making this video, I'm gonna keep it very, very simple. Now, I added both, like I talked about, wind and beach sounds. Let's go ahead back to my project panel and choose a song that we wanna add in there, so. And if we play this back like this, you can obviously tell that both sound and music has significantly helped the vibe or the feeling that you get from watching this video back. And perfect, so now we have sound, we have the visuals looking pretty good, but they can be looking a little better. So double click these and you can shrink those all back if you've already had them open. And let's double click these as well. Go ahead and highlight them both, right click, press nest. I'm gonna keep it as nested sequence 01, but for your sake, I would recommend naming it so you're organized. And now you go back over here to project and you can see that you have a nested sequence 01 or whatever you named it. Now, because this is nested, that means we will affect both clips and both clips are obviously already pieced together. So if you go here to effect controls and I go around and I jump down to scale and I can go 200, right? Of course, it won't look as good as it could because it's gonna look a little bit fuzzy, but if we go, let's say 158, back to our timeline and scroll all the way to the beginning, add a keyframe on rotation, and scroll to the end or press down on our arrow and left once on the arrow keys and add a rotation of right about negative 180. 
Now, as you can tell in the middle of this rotation, which you can watch by doing this, we had some issues right here. We have a visual issue on the terms of uh, these black sections of the video. What we can do is uh, counteract this by 200% and then scaling it down a little bit to see if we can get away with uh, not having to scale any more than we have to, because of course we want to keep this as sharp as possible. So 197% seems to be pretty good. Ah, uh, now nah, you see we have a little bit of blackness there. So really it's about playing with your scale and making sure you can cover that up. So I'd say 205 might get us there. And you know, that's good enough for what I want it to do. Now, if you really want to get fancy with this and you didn't mind it like zooming in and out, we can do something else. Go ahead, go to scale, change this back to about a hundred, right? Right where you had it. And then over time, or even for the sake of lessening, lessening the zoom, go to like 135 or something like that. That's okay. We can see our shot, we can see what's going on. Go ahead and drag through as we see the rotation. We can see where the black sections of the video comes behind it and how bad it can be. So go ahead and somewhere in the middle, go ahead and we put that last number in, 205. Now we know that that is obviously quite zoomed in and not as good looking, but it does, you know, let you do something else with the footage. Now keep playing and you can tell that of course it's still very very zoomed in so remember press down it'll go to the end of the timeline press once on the left arrow key and it will send you back one frame or to our last keyframe that we have made here keyframe it and i'd say go back to 100 percent and then we're going to watch it back and see if we get any black bars or black sections of the video behind it so remember to save as usual press play and watch it back it's going to zoom in and we are getting some black bar sections here so we actually need to Take our keyframe at 205% and right there, we need to zoom it into that at that point. So 205%, it's zooming in, right? And we wanna actually hold the 205% to about here. So keyframe that, 205, still looks good. So it's zooming in, you know, and making all those crazy sounds and whatever, and it sounds good. And now it's zooming out a little bit right here. And this is really harsh. This is really bad looking. You could be happier with, with just the fully zoomed in rotation or no rotation at all. Either way, it's fine and it's up to you. But for what I wanna do and what I wanna uh, give the effect of, I'm gonna go here, right click on the first keyframe and ease it out. Take this one, same deal, but ease in. We're gonna ease out on this one and ease in on this one. Now, if we watch this back, it'll be a bit smoother, just a little bit smoother when you do the whole rotation and whatever. Now, remember we started at 135, we should probably end at 135 as well. If you guys already caught that mistake and you left a comment in the below, I apologize. 135, now we're zoomed into where we were supposed to be at the beginning and that is no longer a problem it seems. And if you want to sell the effect even more, and I know we're going over and over again here, click the top, you know, click your actual nested sequence, go to your last keyframe, pressing this button. And I would go ahead and actually make more of a rotation on it than just what we're at now. And now we're going to change the scale. Let's just go back to 205, where we were at. So instead of zooming out, we just zoom in once. And as you play it, it zooms in, you know, you get some weird perspective warping and all, and it looks kind of like, you know, like the world's just, something's messed up and that's okay because that's the effect we're going for here. The rotation never stops. It doesn't feel like the clip's ending. It feels like something else was already happening. We just cut the shot. So of course this is a unique type of perspective and unique type of shot, but nonetheless, it is very simple to do. And I hope that what I walked you through helped um, a little bit. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it helped you. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, and thanks for watching. Please uh, watch, watch some more. You can click on these ones or you can click in the description and check out some other cool ones as well. I make a lot of tutorials like this on video stuff and I talk just as fast because apparently I'm on a mile a minute right now. Holy crap. Okay, goodbye. <laughs>